Hi, everyone. All right. So it's time to go back to the foundation um, for me. Um, and in fact, I feel like I, I don't come back to the foundations often enough. And I wonder, and I'm talking about spiritual foundations because life is complex, increasingly confusing with all the voices and issues in the world that we encounter on a regular basis, especially with social media. Um, and with, of course, the problems of life, uh, the opportunities as well, and the choices that we all are confronted with um, in life. And for me, the way to deal with all of that in a way that's more equanimous, more peaceful, more powerful, more coherent is to return again to one's spiritual foundation. I, I, this is, well, there's a reason why, you know, religions and spiritual pathways that have stood the test of time, they have a core story and tenets of their religion and pathway that people keep reviewing um, more than once a year. I mean, people review these things, you know, once a month or something like that. Um, of course, if there's a daily in touch, being in touch with one's spiritual philosophy and practice if you are serious about it. But in terms of coming back again and again and again to the core story, which is the foundation. And let me just back up and say, why is the story the foundation? Well, it's because human beings have evolved to be story telling and story, um, yeah, storytelling beings where we see life as a cause and effect. And that when we have a story, a unifying story for our life or for a culture, uh, well, it's unifying. It, it brings integrity and coherence to the experience of life instead of life being a series of random experiences, ran, you know, random events that they're, that, that these different stimuli and events fit into a picture that is understandable, that is meaningful for us. This is why at the foundations of every sustainable philosophy is a story or a set of stories that one generation can tell the next generation. And a lot of times um, the new generation has to understand the core story in their own way, of course, with their own analogies. Um, okay, so I this video is to encourage you to ask yourself, what is your core spiritual story? What is your foundational philosophy that helps you to make sense of this complex life and the daily happenings uh, so that it's not just, why did this happen to me? Or what's this all about? But okay, I can understand the, the seemingly random negative occurrence that happened in my life can be set into a meaningful framework that allows me to be at peace, uh, even though it might be a, a intense or traumatic experience. There is a deeper peace understanding that dramatic event in light of a bigger picture or you could say a strong foundation, because when there is a strong foundation, no matter how much you jump and hit that foundation, it will be stable and carry you through every up and down of life. Or another way of saying is when there's a big enough story, then doesn't matter what seemingly big events happening in the world or intense 
in occurrence in your life, it all is able to fit and be connected in the in the bigger story. So what's yours? And how often do you reflect on it? And what's the philosophy, therefore, that you live by based on the story? So you may wish to pause the recording and reflect on this. And if you like, you can comment below and share with others who are watching this what your foundational story and philosophy is that helps you to make sense of your various happenings in life make sense of your relationships, your opportunities, your, your station in life, what has, what, what, where life has brought you to, to this moment and what you see for the future. Feel free to pause the recording now, reflect on this. If you want to comment below with a few words, I would love to see that as well. Okay. Now I want to share with you mine. And so that's why I wanted you to pause <laughs> and reflect on yours before I uh, bias you with my story. Now, Maybe my story will be uh, inspiring, encouraging, or nonsensical <laughs> to you, because our felt spiritual philosophy. Well, this is why there are there are different religions, right? And there are different philosophies because you know, yes, there's one humanity, but there are millions of personalities and experiences that inform each person believing in a particular story that makes a lot of sense to them. So. So don't take my story as the one right story, even though, of course, based on my experience, based on my DNA and upbringing and culture and, uh, you know, events of my life, what story I'm telling you makes so much sense to me that I think it's the truth with a capital T <laughs> because in my, in this mental soul structure, it feels like the truth. But of course, you have different DNA and different past life experiences, perhaps, and different, yeah. So, so you have a different truth that makes a lot of sense to you. I'm curious what yours is. So, all right. So here's mine. By the way, a little bit of a, uh, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Here's mine. So I believe that there is a higher power. We'll start there. And I believe that this higher power, I call, I'm comfortable calling the higher power God um, or ultimate consciousness. God created, or there is a creator of this reality that I should say this, let me step back. I believe that the ultimate power in charge of all of this existence is what we would call good. Ultimately, the ideal uh, example of love, of wisdom, of courage, of creativity, of compassion, of integrity, of um, joy. The ultimate power that has ultimate control and um, decision over everything that happens in this universe is what we would all aspire to in our best moments. And that gives me tremendous peace. Um, because it's not, it's not to me, again, my, this is my story, right? I don't believe that there is a chaotic universe where random things happen and you can, you know, um, I was reading uh, some online discussion today and, um, the question was, what do you believe is true about life that many people do not accept? And it was sad for me to see that a lot of the comments are, basically like you can work hard and still lose in life you know bad things can still happen to good people and no matter what you do you still might end up you know in a bad place or whatever and it's like wow that if that's the story that people hold on to about 
the truth of life. That's uh, it's very it's scary, you know, and it's sad. And I I believe that not only is there this greater power, but that our bodies will die. Obviously, um, most of our bodies will die. Who knows? With <laughs> coming technology, people might live forever. Who knows? But our our physical bodies will die, but our consciousness does not. That's part of my overall story. Right? Part of my truth is that our consciousness continues beyond the physical body into the next life and the next life and the next life. And that we choose what is going to happen generally, the themes of each life, because I believe that the, the higher power has designed games for us to play designed exper intense experiences in which we believe that, well, at least for this, for this game, we don't see <laughs> what's beyond this game. We don't, that's why a lot of people don't believe in life after death. We can't see it and certainly cannot be sure of it. All we know is people die and they seem to be dead and uh, we, that's what we believe. We're going to be dead and this is the only experience. And therefore, that's why people are like, well, therefore, if this is the only experience, we have to win this game, right? Like I, I should be able to work, work diligently and do be a good person and end up having a good life. And when that is not true, because we see the evidence that that's not true, it seems like a lot of good people don't end up, um, uh, being, having a good life. Then it's, it's a very sad framework. And so I'm grateful that I deeply, deeply, profoundly believe that, that this is not the only game we play, but that we play many games. And the games are to help the eternal soul, which I believe we are. Um, we, we go game to game to game to game. And yet between games, we get to reflect, learn from the previous game we played and and enjoy and rest and recuperate and um, be creative and enjoy with our other soul companions. And then we can decide, oh, I'm going to play another intense game and maybe forget who I am and, and uh, so that I can learn and grow and experience certain things that wouldn't be possible when I remember that I'm eternal and all powerful and, and nothing can ever bad can ever happen to me. Okay. So that's my story spiritual foundational story. And therefore, and this is where I encourage you to go with your story is not, I mean, whatever story you come up with, it's not enough to have a story. I mean, it's, it's very helpful because then you could place all the, all the meaning of life in, in there, but it's also important to say, well, what framework does my story give me to live life? Like, how do you, in other words, what are, what are my, what are my ethics <laughs> based on my philosophy? What are therefore my ethics? What are the principles that I live by and need to reflect on consistently so that it's because it's so easy to stray, right? It's so easy to stray because life is hard. This life is physically hard, emotionally hard, mentally hard. And so it's always, always like our bodies are always trying to trend towards what doing what's easy, doing what is convenient. And what is convenient and easy and pleasurable is often not what is connected deeply to our ethics. If we were to reflect on, again, our, our story, which leads to our deepest and most, the ethics that we say, if I could live like this, it would make me deeply happy and deeply purposeful and coherent with my story. These are my ethics. But, and if you were live, if, if you, if every decision in your daily life, you think, well, that's a good decision. It's, then you're probably not living your ethics, right? You're, you're probably not living to your ideal because that means you've already exhausted your potential. 
And I believe, <laughs> hopefully you believe as well, that your potential is greater than your current day-to-day -day living, which is fine. Your day-to-day -day living is fine. It's just you can be even better. Better has to be tied to your ethical framework. So here are my here's my ethical framework. I was reviewing things again today because I'm, I, I realized I had forgotten. It's so easy. And I talk about this in the various, you know, spiritual videos I, I make is like we have this daily amnesia. And I, I would say not, not more frequent than daily. I feel like we have this like every five minute amnesia. Like we just forget again and again and again what our spiritual story is and therefore what our ethics are. Right. Like it's, it's easy to forget what the bigger picture is when you're so absorbed and just trying to solve today's problems and get through today and just survive and do whatever it is that you have to do today. And it's like easy to me. <laughs> That's why I, I say it's like a, it's a five minute amnesia. It's like you might return to your. I, for me, energy reboot. That's why I do my energy reboot frequently throughout the day. It's like I return to it. I remember for the next few minutes. And then by the next time my energy reboot comes around, I've forgotten at least for several minutes what, the, what this was all about. I'm so involved in whatever I'm doing. So again, what is your story? Let's get to reflect on that yet again. And to, and every time we reflect on our story, this is the tricky part. How can we, how can we keep our story alive? and vibrant and like meaningful for us enough for us to like want to to live to live based on our story because if you just tell the same this is why for example people children who you know who grew up in a particular religion right and it's like the religion like every year they have to do these rituals with their parents because that's part of the religion like eventually for a lot of children, it gets old, <laughs> literally. As they grow older, the, the the old story and the rituals become meaningless because they just they go through the motions. It's no longer alive for them. It's no longer fresh, and uh, therefore applicable to their to their current life. And so that's why they move on from their religion from their childhood. And so my question for you is, what story is? sustainable for you which is like the more sustainable a story is for you the more true it probably is for this life for you okay what what sustainable story like is grounded in truth for you and how do you keep it fresh right which means you may need to find different ways to tell that same story and find add new details to it or uh, look at a particular part of the story in, in a contemporary context right? Uh, for me, I don't mind using AI, artificial intelligence, to help me tell my same story again and again in different ways and use imagery and use music, right, to, to retell the story. So, okay, I, I didn't, I, I've been delaying telling you about my ethics here. So here we go. I resonate most, I realize as I look back, like I resonate most with an ethics called virtue ethics, virtue ethics. If I were to just pick one ethical framework to say, okay, historical ethical framework that makes the most sense to me, it's virtue ethics. Virtue ethics came out of Greek philosophy, you know, uh, Aristotle, uh, well, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle. And then um, in modern times, well, after that, I mean, there, you know, Buddhism, Hinduism, Confucianism, Christianity, um, they all are based on virtue ethics in some way or maybe vice versa, whatever. Anyway, so virtue ethics is the idea that the right thing to do in life is not to feed the hungry or to have world peace or to, um, yeah, you know, to, to, to solve social injustices. That's not the right thing. The right thing to do in life is whatever increases our own virtues. So in other words, it is 
anti-consequentialism, anti-utilitarian, meaning because utilitarian and consequentialism says we need to do whatever we need to do to, to get to world peace. We need to do whatever we need to do to feed, to solve world hunger, meaning whatever violence, whatever, whatever unethical thing, whatever we got to do, whatever we need to do to get to world peace, no hunger, everyone is happy. And virtue ethics says, no, 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 hold on. The way we get there, we sure need to choose. Of course, we need to choose good goals. Yes to solving uh, world hunger. Yes to world peace. Yes to harmony with the environment, et cetera. Those are good goals. But just as important, probably more important, is good means. The way we get there, is it increasing our virtues or decreasing it? Is it increasing our honesty and compassion and courage and wisdom and peace? Or is it decreasing it? Right? Virtues, there are many, many virtues we can look at. I find that to be deeply truthful. Like it makes so much sense to me that that's, that's essentially my, my ethical framework is whatever I'm doing right now and in the next moment and today is how does it increase my virtues? Because that is what matters most. Whatever the result is, I try to be, I practice unattachment to the results if possible. What about? the virtue element is more and more important. So this is why, for example, in my business, you know, I do marketing and teach people how to do marketing. I, I even say marketing itself, which is often a means to an end. It's like market, you, you do marketing so you can have clients, so you can have customers. And then when you work with your customers or clients, that's when you're doing your real work. Marketing is just a necessary evil. That's how a lot of people think of it. That's a, to me, because of my ethical framework, I said, no, 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 no. Marketing itself must be, if it's to be worthwhile as an activity at all, it must be something that increases our virtue. Or if not, then it's decreasing our virtue. That's why so much of marketing is lying and manipulation and hyping up deception just to get a customer or a client, right? Or like at least not, not in alignment with our integrity and our purpose and all that stuff like no no marketing itself let's set the results aside of course we want to have efficacious marketing but more importantly we want marketing that increases our virtues and that's really how i see my work and whether it's marketing or i'm doing bookkeeping or i'm doing you know website development or i'm doing writing a piece of something it's all question for me as always how is this moment increasing my virtue? And how can I make this moment so meaningful as to increase my virtues? And by doing this, by, 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 by always focusing on how am I growing my virtues, I believe this also sets an example for others and helps others reflect on and, and work on taking their life moments and increasing their virtues that way. And, and so this is what I believe. I, I, I believe that if, if I keep working on virtues after this life is over, I will reflect back on this life. And so that, that was a good game. That was worth living because I increased. It's almost like I see literally, I see <laughs> that's part of my story. Like I said, this life is a game. It's like a computer game. It's a simulation, right? It seems so real, but it's a simulation. And the points that we earn, I believe. Our virtue points are, did you grow in compassion? Did you grow in honesty? Did you grow in, um, peace, peacefulness? Did you grow in courage? Did you grow in joy, joyfulness? Did you grow in, um, you know, um, perseverance? Did you grow, you know, did you grow in gentleness? Right. Um, so anyway, that's, that's how I see things. I am curious, um, what your story is and therefore what your ethical foundation and framework is and and how do you return to that do you have some kind of ritual that you return to it once a month once a week that's why people go to church or temple right it reminds them again of the story and the ethical framework 
So how often do you return to it? Some people pray, meditate every day. Anyway, I hope, I hope this is helpful in some way. And, um, uh, thanks for joining me on this, on this journey. And thanks for watching.